Okay, I'm uh, Kay Mellor. I'm the writer and director of Band of Gold. I'm Gaina Fay and I'm an actress and I'm playing Rose in Band of Gold. Uh, well, the plot is basically about a, a young mother who um, <clears throat> doesn't, can't pay off her loan. She's, uh, she's juggling money, she's absolutely broke and she, um, she, she meets a woman who is a sex worker and is led into prostitution. Um, so, so we meet a group of, of uh, sex workers and a mistress and it's basically how she, her interaction with those women and what happens to her and a result of what happens to her, who did it? So it's a kind of whodunit as well. Well, it's, it's quite daunting really because I've got 15 million viewers overnight so you know, it's a tall order to kind of try and, you know, to, tr to try and uh, pull off but um, basically what I did was t take the main thrust of the story instead of six hours of it and kind of go what is, what is the essential element of the story and, and condense it into two hours um, and of course keeping all the humour and the pathos um, but at the same time you know it's a thriller and it's a sort of you know it's, it's got a, a, a gritty flavour to it um, it's not um, it's not an all singing all dancing show but nevertheless uh, it's kind of life affirming there's definitely humour in the show more than we thought <laughs> yeah T to be honest I even I didn't know until we went to Leeds and then you suddenly realise yes it's funny um, and there has to be light and shade there has but to be you, the ladies were funny weren't they when you were doing the research yeah. the, the, la the ladies who you interviewed were funny and that's what came across the camaraderie between the women who, the sex workers who, who involved in the, in the original series they have this banter between each other, you know, so I suppose they have to see it's all yeah. the light and shade. They won't be able to do it, let's be honest about it, you know, they, they don't take themselves too seriously and they, you know, they would tell me things that, that I'd be kind of sat there going, oh, I mean, I'm with my jaw open and then the next breath I'd be laughing my head off and I knew then that, um, that there was a drama series to be had and, you know, and, and the characters were born, you know, so each character, the Carol, Anita, Rose, played by Gaynor, um, Anita played by Laurie Brett, and Carol played by the lovely newcomer, um, Emma Osman, you know, those characters are, came directly from the women that I interviewed that were sex workers, so their, their character comes through, and you know, I, I, I'm thrilled that actually, you know, it's still up and it's still working and even though, you know, Kathy Tyson played it in, in one instance and now Emma plays it, uh, you know, and, and yet the character still lives. Well, um, Geraldine James played Rose in the TV show and she was absolutely incredible, you know, so it was um, big shoes to fill, really. But for me, because I watched it and I was there when it was being created in the, <laughs> the room next door <laughs> to my bedroom, um, and you know, so I know that my mum did loads and loads of research at the time, and the character was so well formed and so well rounded that it, it's 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 not simple because it's she's a complex character, but I've kind of you know really looked into her and and trying to get as many levels to her and layers to her as possible. But um, she's a fantastic character to play, is Rose. And all the characters in the show, every single character is multifaceted. It's not just, they're not just one dimensional. And that's what's so brilliant about it. I mean, what's coming across is that people are saying it feels like the original show, only it's got an extra layer and they absolutely love it. It's a richer experience for them because it's live and because, you know, it's condensed. So we've taken out any periphery. It's all gone, you know, it's just honed it down to the story, the humour, the who done it, you know, it's and and people have rebooked to come back and see it again at Leeds. Uh, so, you know, I'm thrilled really with how it how it's gone. Well, it started off with a couple of workshops. We did two workshops and the second workshop we had a, a small invited audience. 
of 30 people because you know I, I didn't know whether people would enjoy watching it on the stage you know whether or not it was a theatre going public would actually pay to come and see it but uh, we went right across the social strata with the 30 people that we chose 30 anonymous people and everyone so they, they all had a bit of paper as well and a pen and uh, they were anonymous we asked them not to put the names on so I didn't know any of them anyway uh, but <clears throat> at the end of it we collected them up and read them all and they all said that they would definitely come and see it at a theatre that they would definitely tell a friend to come and see it um, that they didn't guess who the killer was I think one person guessed who the killer was and um, that, that, yeah, that, that they thought it was a great piece of drama so that that for me made me kind of go okay I'm going to do this and so then the next point the next stage was casting really and we wanted to get a cast that was you know really good that were as near to the characters as possible you know we wanted to work with people that were good actors first and foremost but also if they had a bit of a profile that was a bonus for us because I think the theatre going audience the theatre going yeah audience want to see people that they recognize maybe from I don't know Emmerdale or EastEnders or you know Holly you know something like that but they have to be good actors amazing in Leeds it's just it's just amazing I, I I couldn't have wished for um, a better response I mean, to be honest with you we've had fabulous houses a uh, really really good chock up this word the, of mouth has been amazing yeah, people booking again and again yeah. and p passing on so that you know by the time we'd finished we could have probably played another week you know uh, and you know I'm sure that we'll come back and uh, do do it again at some point but really really great and our reviews well I could have written them myself so <laughs> <laughs> you know she probably it, did <laughs> yes, probably. yeah no it was it, it, honestly it was lovely it was lovely to have that kind of feedback it's so wonderful as well to be on stage and to be able to feel that immediate you know reaction um, because you don't get that on television so for, for me and for the rest of the cast who are used to TV it's such it's such a buzz, you know. I mean, I've done a lot of theatre before, so I'm, you know, I, I know it, but I can't, I couldn't remember it. And it was such when you feel that first, you go out there and you, the audience, you can hear a pin drop yeah. in moments, and then other moments, you like, I didn't realise there was a laugh there. <laughs> so there are times where they're just the audience are actually wrong-footed, and they they kind of they didn't expect it, you know, and. Um, but what I, was, yeah, I didn't know that. You don't know it until yeah. you feel it and you're in the audience. Yeah. That's the wonder of live theatre. Yeah. You know, that is, that's the magic of it, really, to be honest with you. And you don't get that on television. It's exactly the same. It is. It feels <laughs> like it could be uh, um, mm. in present day. You know, I mean, it could have been written now. There's no difference apart from mobile the, phones. Probably. Yeah, mobile That's phones. That's it, really. You know, it's set in the nineties. It's set. It's set when it was shown on on television. But you know, uh, nothing much has changed. Nothing much has changed really in terms of poverty. There are still people that don't know how to get to the end of the week. There are still you know universal credit and austerity. There are a, a lot of young women that are having to you know sell their bodies, yeah. go, move into sex sex work to be able to get by that's and, everywhere and that's all across the country yeah. not just in yeah. the north it's everywhere yeah i mean after band of gold aired on on television there was a movement there was a slight movement from the police and from you know people's attitude changed a bit yeah. towards sex workers i think they saw them as women instead of you know sex workers or prostitutes um so there was a shift uh, but but the real culprit is poverty. The real culprit is, you know, and drugs. Sadly, today, um, drugs kind of fuel fuel it, and, and it's a cycle, because the women have to take the drugs to do the job, to pay for the drugs to do the job. Do you know what I mean? It's a cycle of poverty that needs to be broken. I think audiences will come away with being told a story a big story with a beginning and a middle and an end uh, they will um, they will come away going oh I did I get oh I don't didn't think it was him or you know a riddle that's been solved I think they will come away with a better understanding and empathy towards the women that actually have to walk the streets and, 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 and do sex work to earn a living we did a questions and answers didn't we after the, one of yes. the shows yeah. and um, there was a lot of people you know you could see the really thoughtful about what yeah. they'd just seen and um, and a few quite a lot of the people were saying that they feel extremely privileged in their life you know the fact 
and it had taken them on such a journey that they, were, they were, said, I'm going to go away and think about this. It's really had an impact on me. And a friend of mine who came, who's not a big theatre goer, but came twice. I invited him on one occasion, then he paid to come with his partner. And um, he just said, this is incredible, I'm going to come and see it again, because it's just, it makes me realise how lucky I am, and, you know, um, how fortunate I am, and how much work needs to be done, and how much education, you know, needs to get out there for people about, about this issue, you know. And sometimes, you know, I was sat in the audience, and I, I, I was amongst people that were kind of upset, or laughing, or totally engrossed. So I experienced it, I was sat amongst them and, and it was you know, a privilege to, to sit amongst them really. 